bolts, that's fine. I'm not going to give you the nuts and bolts of it because if you don't already know who won, you're probably going to watch the replay and you don't want it ruined for you. So there are no spoilers. There's no sports talk. I will say this. Cam Newton walked away from his press conference and a Hall of Famer called him out on it and said, you won't be along in the league acting like that boy. Social justice idiots said that the word boy was racist, that he meant boy in a racist way. No, he didn't. And let me tell you something else. We do not look down on Cam Newton because he's black. We didn't make him a success because he was black. We made him a success because he earned it when he played football. And we dislike him because he's a jerk, not because he's black. And he earned that as well. Well, that's the kind of thing we're talking about here. Um, you've got people saying that this was racist, that was racist, minorities held down. Minorities held down? Most of the millionaires on the field were black. I see an awful lot of white people in LeBron James t-shirts. I know it's another sport, but you know what I'm saying. Um... I see a lot of white people and Asian people and all kinds of people wearing shirts for sports heroes that are black. Now, how you can be racist when you... I, I drive my best friend Dan and I. Uh, we like to go to football games. It's, it's a release. It's away from all this. I, I get it. Football rots the mind if you worship it. We don't, so don't lecture me. It, it gets me away from all this. I went to see the Cleveland Browns. Drove up there in gas. It's about an hour and a half away. Paid their tickets. Bought their popcorn, their whatever, and chowing, getting fat. When did I not support anybody based on race? For one thing, it never even crossed my mind, but we'll go with it. How was I racist? I, I rooted for Cincy. I sure didn't root for Cleveland. There were black people on Cincy. The white people on Cincy. I wanted Cincy. I didn't care what color they were. How are we holding back African Americans or anybody else when we're paying them millions of dollars on the football field? Whatever. But uh, we had a gay pride parade. It was a halftime show. I missed it, but I saw pictures of it. Well, listen to this. Steve Watch in Prison Planet. Keyboard warriors cry and whine about Super Bowl ads being transphobic and homophobic. For one thing, it's a football game. Grow a pair. The perpetually offended took to Twitter yesterday to make it known that their feelings had been hurt by ads during the Stupid Bowl. It was a good game. Leaving aside the Doritos ad, which is a whole other subject for another article, two, -thirds, two ads in particular riled the social justice warriors who simply could not contain their pain and suffering. The first ad was for Snickers a fairly weak short in which the actor William Dafoe, who is a acting legend, is dressed as Marilyn Monroe in the iconic white dress from the Seven Year Itch movie. It's barely amusing, William Dafoe with the grizzled old man veiny legs. But no, it was transphobic. So now, transgendered people don't only want permission to walk around, dressed however they want, and I'm in favor of it. I have no problem with it. But if you don't think that we're going to comment that you look ridiculous if we think you do, then you're wrong, okay? People hate my tattoo. People say, oh, you look ridiculous with a tattoo. Maybe you think I do. Do I, do I get special treatment because I altered my body in such a way that you don't like it? Or is it different for you? Because that, to me, seems like you're prejudiced against me if you think it is. Ridiculous! This is mind-blowing to me. It was a joke, and I'm pretty sure the people that made it weren't thinking anything about transphobia at all, any more than I was wondering what race the quarterback for Cincy was. I didn't give a damn. I wanted Cincy to win. And no, I wasn't rooting against the black people on the Browns. It never crossed my mind. You gotta say it, or people go off the deep end. It says, hey, Snickers, have a Snickers. You look a little transphobic when you're hungry. Oh, yeah, yeah, because Snickers, you know, I'm sure, expected the 
average American to be a little more intelligent than to think that this was transphobic. But they shouldn't have because we have an American population that thinks Beyonce can sing and she can't. So, I mean, they, they went out on the limb. I get it. The second ad for Maramot Mountain depicted a man hanging out in the woods with a Maramot. It's a bit weird. They bond while swimming, hiking, and taking in nice views. Then the man tries to kiss the Maramot, and the Maramot slaps him, but then they make out. Anyway, you're supposed to just chuckle and go, yeah, that's strange, because it's a CGI Maramot. Then you move on with your life. But no, it's homophobic. And is depicting bestiality. Yeah, because Maramot Mountain stands for bestiality. You knew, you saw it coming, didn't you? They are in favor of bestiality at Marmont Mountain. Which I don't even know what the hell that is. You're supposed to just chuckle, but you don't. Did I see a commercial with a homophobic beaver? No. You saw a commercial that was made for somebody with a sense of humor, which you clear, clearly don't have. He writes, last time we looked, the planet was on the verge of global conflict and the world's financial system was about to collapse. Is it just me, us, or does the CGI Marmot and the man in the dress just not seem worthy of getting riled about? Well, if you have a brain in your head. And friends, that brings us to the dumb D of the day! Oh, the dumb D of the day is going to take a second. dispel the notion of white privilege. There is no freaking white privilege. Okay? It doesn't exist. Your average... I'm going to get a few things off, off my chest right away here before I begin. Your average white person at no point in time thinks about someone's race at all. Zero! Okay, I'm a landlord. I have a house. If a black person wants to rent from me, I have no problem with it, and I will happily give them the house. Now, if they show up without a job, if they show up drunk, $50 short on the rent, and the deposit, and they have a horrible record of renting in the past, then I probably will not rent to that person. If they're white and they show up, they got redneck tobacco in, they're spitting on my floor, whitey's not getting it. I'm sorry. It has nothing to do with race and everything to do with culture. Do not tell me that hip-hop culture is black culture. It is not. To say that is offensive to blacks because most blacks don't want to hear about booty, shouty, getting theirs, yo. No, absolutely not. So get over it. Second of all, this ridiculous notion I've heard people say, well, if you are got white privilege, you can go into a club and expect to hear music that is indicative of your race. What? There is no black music. And if there was, it would be referred to as Drake and Usher and that garbage. That's what most modern, yo, hip-hop culture people call it. I'm a DJ, so don't tell me I'm wrong. Black, can you play some black music? Oh, you mean music that slanders women. Oh, I got you, some Drake. That's great. That's black music, right? Because all black slander women, right? Ridiculous to call that black music. But you don't hear white music when you go to a bar. I Never. Go, go into a bar. I went into a bar once and I asked for Benny Benassi before he became a sellout. Absolutely didn't happen. Um, you don't hear Skrillex when you go to a bar. You don't hear Metallica. The only way you hear white music is if you go to a country bar and that white music sucks. Quote, unquote, white music? Uh -uh. I hear Usher. I hear Drake. I hear T-Pain. And if it's white, I hear Christina Aguilera, Lady Gaga. Do not tell me that Lady Gaga is white music because I'll vomit. That is not white music. That isn't even music. They are using race to divide us. 
and we fall for it every time. 44703, look it up. That's my area code. That's where I grew up. A zip code. That's where I grew up. You know what 44703 is? It's a remarkable place to get shot and die. I have been jumped more than a launch ramp in a skate park. Growing up was a prayer for survival. We skateboarded in packs because to not do so were the death sentence. Was I robbed and jumped by black thugs just for the fun of it? Yes. Was I jumped and fought by white thugs just for the fun of it? You bet your ass I was. Okay, don't give me this notion about driving taxi. Oh, cab drivers lock their doors when they see a black person. I know, I'm black. It's happening to you because you're black. What you're not seeing is... 10 years driving cab, I did the same thing if the person was white. You just don't know because you're not white. That guy probably thinks I did it because I don't like his hair. Probably thought I did it because whatever. No, I don't care who it was. It could be a 10 year old. I would lock the door. Why? 44703. Never once did I base it on race or color in any way, shape, matter, or form. Moving on. White privilege. White privilege. You got so much more than I do. No. No, I don't. Um, never have I gotten any great opportunity. Most of what I've earned, I've been cheated out of. I'll be dead honest. Um, success or failure has never depended on the color that I am. I have worked with black people. I have worked with white people. I have gotten the same jobs as black people in almost every instance, including the one I have now. I'm the day DJ, I'm the night DJ Monday through Thursday, and I'm white. The Friday, Saturday DJ is a black man. We make the same money, we have the same privilege as the other one does, which is very little. We, no great advantage was given to him because he was black. No great advantage was given to me because I was white. Same money, same job, same treatment, same rules. He's not allowed to play five obituary songs because it's white people barking and screaming. He's also not allowed to play black music that drops every N-bomb that you've ever heard in your life. Makes it sound like a KKK rally. He's not allowed to play that. And guess what? Neither am I. Either one. Same rules. No white privilege. I went to Stark State College. No great privilege. What a school that was! Oh! Didn't happen, people. Didn't happen. There was no privilege. I wasn't held back either. It's not, it's not there. You're, I'm telling you what white people say. It doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. With a little bit of that out of the way, Victor Skinner, EAG News. Chicago seven, Seminary urges students to wear white privilege glasses. Those would be clear glasses where everything looks exactly the same, but we're, I'm going to try without swearing to go through this, and I'm not sure that I can do it. And you better hit share because God, just dealing with this insanity pisses me off. One more way to divide people and get us to be stupid enough to fall for it. If only white people could see the wildly racist white supremacy culture that dominates America and prevents minorities from living peaceful and happy existences. Yeah, because white people are responsible for black people shooting each other at higher rates than white people kill blacks. Um, black victims of white violence, 62,593. White victims of black violence, 320,082. Whites killed by police from 1999 to 2011, 2,151. Blacks killed by police from 1999 to 2011, 1,130. Now, if blacks are minority, and they are, if blacks are minority, how is it that black victims on white are 62,000 and white victims on black are 32, uh, 320,000? And this is according to the 2010 National Crime Victimization Survey, you can look it up, compiled by the Bureau of Justice Statistics under the U.S. Department of Justice, headed by a black man, Attorney General, and liberal Democrat, Eric Holder. So don't tell me my numbers were skewed. It came from me from a black man. Now, am I saying that all black people are violent? No. No. 
Most black people that I know would call black people that jump anybody for any reason, regardless of color, stupid. We will sit there and have a drink together and talk about stupid people because we don't care about color. But I figured those numbers should go out there since peaceful and happy existences are somehow stopped by white people. That's the focus of the Chicago Theological Seminary's new program and video produced to bring naive whites into the white privilege progressive mindset that white folks in America enjoy a system of special perks not afforded to everyone else, and that the system is hopelessly stacked against minorities. Well, let's see. At the age of 19, my white ass could not afford to go to college. I didn't go to college until I was damn near 30 years old. I was working at the full, uh, full time, I was married to my first wife, and it took me a little over six and a half years to get a two-year degree because I was working my ass off driving cab, running sound, and doing anything I could do to make a living. I damn near starved to death. I went through bankruptcy, and I mold more in student loans than I shall ever pay back. My bankruptcy was not caused by buying a lot of expensive bling or anything like that. Never. I never owned a car over three grand, I don't think. Maybe four grand. Um, no. Absolutely. That, that's, that, that's my white privilege story. Ooh. Ridiculous. And I know a whole lot of black people that were in the exact same boat. And it wasn't because they were black or because I was white. It's simply the way it is. Wake up. The seminary video, White Privilege Glasses, depicts a white man seeing the world from the interactions from everyone from the police to taxi drivers through the eyes of black friends, Coraline's reports. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw up before this is done. The CTS video both exposes the seminary's perspective on race and illustrates the white privilege mindset that becomes increasingly common in public school teaching training programs. Now, I've been told that you're racist. Isn't it kind of hard to be racist when you love dubstep, trap step, techno, kind of invented by black people? I love jazz. I have a jazz playing style. My favorite standard rock and roll band in the last five or six years would probably be the Heavy. My favorite drummer is arguably, there's a few, uh, the drummer from Suffocation, Chris Smith, black man. I am called racist because I know that vocal running sucks. And I don't want to listen to it. I'm called racist because I don't want to hear Drake talk about, yo nigga, what's up, all day long. I'm racist because I call that mind rot. What people don't understand is when it comes to what I call mind rot, because that's what it is, I have just as much disdain for Lady Gaga. There is no talent there. And at no point does it have anything to do with color. Yo nigga, what's up? I hate that song. Oh my god, I hate that song. In numerous school districts across the country, far-left groups like the Pacific Educational Group and others are securing massive consulting contracts to promote white privilege and race-based teaching. So if you just blame the white man for everything, you will get an A. How many of you don't know this? Uh, most whites, I've mentioned it in other shows, never owned a slave. It was like 1% of the white race that owned a slave. I don't even think the average white person, including mine, their family wasn't even in the country yet at the time. The whites owned slaves. My family was probably still in Mexico, Italy, Sicily, and England and Ireland, most likely. I'm positive of it. Um, wasn't even here. Had no part in it at all. Who did? Rockefellers. Um, the plantation owners, which um, are in some instances still have the same companies in the South. Nobody that you're likely to run into on the street in 44703, for one. The roughly 70 second video, makes you want to vomit, starts off with a goofy white guy meeting with his well-dressed, cultural black friends in an upscale bar for coffee. I don't know white privilege, I just don't see it, the white guy says. The couple look at each other with a knowing glance. Aww. You know what you need, the black man tells his friend as he slips a pair of 3D style glasses from his front pocket. What are these, the white he asks. White privilege glasses, the woman explains, it helps you see the world as we do. Which is wrong. 
The video cuts to the white man on the street with a woman pushing a stroller towards him. He slips on the glasses to dramatic music and the woman immediately scowls, hides her purse, and moves away quickly. Pause. What's funny about that is... Some African Americans may not understand that that happens to white people. Women will do that. They will hide their purse from anyone looming over them. The same reaction would have been given even if they had been white. And all white people know this. They just don't want to say it because it sounds like you're racist. No. Ask my wife, Christelle, if you go up behind Christelle, no matter what color you are, she's going to hide it. It is not because of your color. Because while she doesn't want robbed from a black person, she doesn't want robbed by anyone. And you don't trust anyone at all when you're holding a purse full of money. Common sense will tell you this. I don't even know why I'm doing a report on it. It just keeps coming up. Next, he looks at the intersection of Jefferson Street and Washington Street, which transformed to the corner slave owner and slave owner when he dons the white privilege glasses. Yeah, because, you know, most whites own slaves, 1% of them. In a neighborhood store, the shop owner transforms from welcoming to suspicious when viewed through white privilege glasses. No. If you don't look like you have a certain amount of money, you get that look. If I walk in kind of in my faded Monty Python t-shirt, my tattoo out, and my hair all frizzy, I get the same look. If I walk in like I go to work with like a silk shirt on, uh, dress pants, I don't get a look. If a black man walks in with his pants sagging, saying, yo, what up? They're going to look at him. If a white man goes in, I mean, excuse me, if a black man goes in dressed like I go to work, not going to get a look. Not going to happen. It isn't your color. It might just be the way you're dressed that day. And again, I usually dress like this. So don't give me, you don't give me, I'm not like I'm preaching at you how you should dress. I just don't care what they look, what they think of me when they see me walk in the store. I don't give a rat's ass. I'm going to buy what I'm getting. And if you piss me off, I'm not. Uh, but I'm letting you know it's not color based. I get it all the time. When viewed through white privilege glasses, the local policeman who nods to his white friend but turns to attack mode with the glasses on. Can you see the white privilege? How do you define, how do you even get to start this? For one thing, I already gave you the stats on how many white people were killed by police officers already, which is far higher, even statistically. Second of all, let's get into this. If you are going to use this analogy, you need to understand that when I got my DUI, I blew, it was like eight years ago, I blew so unbelievably low that some police officers will let the person go. In every instance of anybody blowing as low as I did, the court plea bargained them down to reckless op except me. Do I mean black people? Yes. Do I mean white people? Yes. Everyone that I've ever heard of that blows as low as I did got reckless op, except me. I have no drug or alcohol related offense on my record, nor did I at the time. I do now, the DUI. Nor did I at the time. I have no, I had no history of it whatsoever. I was a 34-year-old man with a full-time job. At that time, I had been at the club for uh, four or five years. And I work at a bar. I worked at a bar for years. My first ever offense of any kind. They threw the book at me.
okay? It's not color. It comes down to whether they like you or whether they don't. And I went in there with hair all back, uh, a nice, I, 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 gone. It didn't help at all. They, 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 for some reason, just went into full-blown attack mode and hit me with everything they could. For the lowest DUI offense that you can possibly get, there are three tiers DUI. Mine was first, and barely that. So don't give me the cop story. When I was growing up skateboarding, I had no tattoos. My dad made me keep my hair so short I looked like a cue ball. See it? Um, terrible. I look like, I look like a nerd, really. I couldn't even skateboard down the street without police bothering me. So don't give me this white privilege bullcrap. Because it doesn't exist. I have the same stories as black people do. Why? Because the authorities and the cops in some instances and the law structure is hosing us both equally. But if they can get us to think it's about our color, then we won't ever reunite, unite, will we? Just in case your answer is still no, the CTS provides one last example. The white friend, glasses on, fails to hail a taxi. He takes off the glasses and shakes his head. Now look, I'm going to let you know a few things here as a cab driver. There is no way that is based on race. In many instances, when I have driven, and it happened a lot in 10 years, when I was driven by people that were trying to hail me, they would call my dispatcher and say, you idiot your cab driver drove by me. I was en route to another call. Just because you, you'll see me drop off at the airport. Thank God I don't do it anymore. It's a terrible job. You would see me drop off at the airport, and then somebody would try to flag me down. It, it, like Hall of Fame weekend comes to mind. Football Hall of Fame is in my city. Um, if I pick up into Hall of Fame and I take them to the airport, my dispatcher says, hey, my old work number was 82. Hey, 82, I need you to go back down to the Hall of Fame. I got another one going back to the airport. I can't pick this guy up because I just told my boss that I was taking that call. And if I don't take the call now, she's going to be backed up and you're going to have a mess. So do not assume that the cab driver is free because he just dropped off. Do not assume that we power lock our doors because of your color. We power lock our doors for everyone. You're only noticing it because you're looking to. Um, pizza is another one. I was a pizza driver. They do not refuse in any instance whatsoever to deliver pizza based on whether you are black or not. No place I've ever worked do they pick up, hear a black voice, and not deliver.